Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the very first session of Star Trek Bastet. Uh, we are an actual play podcast that is role playing using the Star Trek Adventures rule system by Modifius Entertainment. As you'll see in this session, particularly, uh, we're running with an interesting premise that involves the themes of both the journey home and of time shenanigans. Now, of course, uh, don't stress if you can't stick around for the full session. The VOD and an audio-only version will be made available on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, since this is sort of the first session, I don't really have much in the way of announcements, so let's just have everyone go around and briefly introduce themselves and their characters, uh, starting with you, Alex. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex, and I am playing Lieutenant Junior Grade Abasi. All right, uh, Nikhil. Yep, my name is Nikhil, and I play uh, Lieutenant Alexio. Brian. My name is Brian. I'm at Mind Over Brian on Twitter and Twitch, except with a zero instead of an O on Twitch. And I'm playing uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Baylor Droxine. Right, Mr. Wolf. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Derek Wolf. I am playing Lieutenant Junior Grade Kalos Cater, or Cater Kalos. Oops, sorry, I screwed up my name. <laughs> you know, first session jitters, you got to mess something up. And then uh, last but not least, Matthew. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play Lieutenant Tyr Thavarin, uh, the chief engineer. All right. And with that, let's run our uh, quick little intro that I've prepared. So yeah, nice and quick little uh, introductory thing there. But uh, something I like doing for all my Star Trek Adventures games is having an opening monologue as read by the players. And I believe today that's coming from Lieutenant Junior Grade Cater. So Wolf, take it away. Stardate 52392.3. Acting Chief Medical Officer's Log. Personal. I I made it. I, I mean, I, I actually made it. I'm, I'm aboard a starship. That is to be my home for, well, I mean, as long as I keep doing my job and I hope, breathe. Okay. It's a Prometheus class. I mean, just like, wow. Um, the sick bay is like nothing I've ever worked with in the past. I mean, advanced auto surgery bays, multiple replicators for creating bio sprays. And just like, holy crap. Like, wow. Breathe again. Breathe, breathe. Okay. I feel like just maybe someone was looking out for me. Maybe one of those professors I sucked up to my entire time at the Academy had a connection with high command. I mean, uh, couldn't be happier. <clears throat> anyway, wish I could say the rest for the same for the rest of the crew. Well, skeleton, skeleton crew. There's only 10 of us on board. And while we make our way back to space K7 under the command of Commander Marlowe, a somewhat serious fellow named Braxton keeps repeating in his mind over and over that he's better than this. I, I try not to read the crew's thoughts, but in my excitement over my first posting and my focus has been a little off and I keep hearing things, perhaps maybe I shouldn't. Although yesterday I did take up a Lieutenant tier on going to the holodeck for a few rounds of target practice. It was actually a really interesting experience. The one time out of several that I won, became rather surly about it and said he wanted to stop playing. Anyway, Lieutenant Alexio seems nice enough despite being what he is. Mm, having access to the crew's medical logs almost seems like cheating. Eh, oh well. Ah, I think the most exciting thing in, and one of the most exciting crew members is the engineer on board, Lieutenant Obsi. Oh my God, he looks like a bobcat. I mean, I freaking love bobcats. Oh Lord, oh God, I'm gonna embarrass myself when I'm around him. I, I've always wanted to, like my mom and dad to get me a cat when I was back home, but they said I couldn't. I, I wonder if I can make friends with him. No, 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 maybe, maybe just, okay, just resist the urge to scratch his ears. Okay, resist the urge. According to my research into Cassians, this is considered highly offensive. Quite a shame. <clears throat> anyway. Aside from Marlowe, we're all junior officers or lower, so it's been kind of nice getting to know the ship before the real brass takes command. According to the ship's computer, we should be arriving at the station soon. Can't wait to meet my assistant and log. All right, and you may have uh, one momentum uh, for that opening log. All right, so uh, our first scene today is actually going to be in main engineering uh, within Gamma section. And every single member of the skeleton crew is present. 
And I think the best way we're going to go about introducing each of these characters uh, is going to be kind of doing a round robin thing where we're going to start uh, with uh, Lieutenant Tavarin and sort of proceed down that line in a uh, counterclockwise fashion. Uh, but I'll start. So the stand-up meeting in engineering is being led by a Commander Marlowe. Uh, Marlowe looks to be uh, a gentleman in his mid-40s, maybe early 50s. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, he has a sort of somewhat well-kept and impressive goatee that he keeps somewhat short. Uh, has sort of brown eyes that seem to sparkle with life. And uh, pretty much any time any of you have caught wind of Marlowe, like when he's maybe, you know, done water cooler conversation with you, uh, you know he's a family man. Uh, you know that he likes talking about his wife, talking about his kids, etc., etc. But uh, Marlo starts the meeting by saying, uh, thank you all for coming to uh, engineering. Uh, I wish we could have done this on uh, deck one, but uh, as you all know, we're kind of locked out of that until the full crew is here. Uh, let's just go around and see if anything's cropped up in our uh, shift today. Uh, Lieutenant Tavarin, uh, anything to report? And uh, Matthew? If uh, you could introduce your character uh, in a visual description, and then basically you can jump into roleplay after that. And we'll do that for each character. Sure. Uh, so Lieutenant Thavarin is uh, a fairly robust looking Benzite who is standing stiffly at attention. Um, he has uh, mottled kind of purplish and blue skin. Uh, one of the unusual things of note is that he is not wearing some kind of breathing apparatus, which indicates that he has received some kind of a warranted uh, Federation uh, genetic engineering to allow him to breathe properly in this environment. And um, you notice that uh, the strange thing about him is that he really doesn't carry himself in the kind of almost neurotic and overly fixated way of a Benzite. Um, and he clutches in his two thumbed hands um, a data pad that he is reviewing regarding the uh, status of the computer course for the ship. Well, Captain, uh, unfortunately, the isolated backups for our bioneural gel packs are substandard at best. There's nothing that I can really do about this until we have the ship retrofitted. We're running on backups until, well, we can really track down the problems with the bioneural gel packs. Marlo sort of scratches his chin at that and says, hmm, see, uh, see if you can get a requisition order for that once we hit uh, DS uh, K7. I'm hoping we can get most of the issues ironed out before the full crew is here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Lieutenant Relour, uh, anything to report? Uh, so Lieutenant Relour uh, is a uh, Beta Z or Beta Zoid. Uh, she is a little bit on the shorter side, maybe about 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. Um, has sort of the characteristic dark eyes of a Beta Zoid. And uh, you see that she's kind of like not really paying attention. So when she's called on, she kind of goes, oh, oh, um, sorry, uh, no, nothing to report, Commander. Uh, I've more or less been trading off uh, helm position with uh, Lieutenant, uh, and she kind of looks around, uh, what was his name again? And uh, what I would say for those of you that uh, are empathic, you can tell that she's doing this just to mess with uh, Lieutenant Baylor Droxine. Oh, yeah, right, Droxine. And she kind of nudges Droxine in the in the uh, kind of ribbing with her elbow into uh, his chest, or at least his shoulder. And uh, it is uh, an interesting time. Uh, oh, yeah, cameras got messed up. So let's see. Wolf and Matthew, if you toggle yours off. And then uh, Wolf and then Lovecraft. There we go. Excellent. Sorry about that. But yeah, uh, so Droxine, uh, Relure has just uh, kind of ribbed you and said that she's had nothing really to do because you're trading off helm positions with her every once in a while. And uh, Marlo just simply nods and says, all right, uh, Droxine, you have anything to report? Uh, sorry, I have noticed a uh, nebulous reading in the um, navigation sensors. Um, I assume it's some sort of... Uh, um, uh, just a, like a, a an echo from the from the uh, diagnostic, but uh, I'm not sure. Mm, how would you rate this in uh, in urgency? Is this something we need to have a computer expert look at, or is this a sensor problem? Honestly, when the crew gets on, they're probably going to do like a whole sweep, like and a full bore diagnostic. I would say probably leave it for them. 
Mm, work with R'hllor here. I want that sort of thing ironed out before people get here. Uh, the better the ship is when the captain steps aboard, well, the better we'll be because he'll be happy. Uh, Lieutenant Mir, uh, anything to report on your end? Uh, so Lieutenant Mir, uh, is a trill. Uh, she has, uh, shortish blonde hair, uh, that's kind of muddy at the roots. Of course, the trill spots. Uh, interestingly, uh, ice blue eyes. And, uh, she's been paying actually quite a lot of attention to this back and forth. And, uh, she sort of almost frowns, but not quite a scowl and says, Well, sir, uh... I hate to be a broken record based on what everybody else has said so far, but I am noticing some flaws and issues with the main computer uh, to the point that uh, even I'm having issues uh, connecting my neural interface to it. And uh, Marlo kind of hems and haws for a bit and says, all right, well, it sounds like we're going to need to take off the, uh, take the main computer offline for a little bit. Uh, let's do that after this meeting. Let's, uh, let's get that done. Uh, Lieutenant Absey, uh, anything to report on your end? I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this particular warp core, sir. It's uh, the best way I can think of putting it. It's operating outside of what I would consider normal parameters. It's almost as if it has too much power for what it should be doing. Well, my understanding is the Prometheus class is over-engineered like that. Uh, you've got that baby behind you, and then you have two more in uh, Beta and Alpha section. See, I, I wasn't briefed on any of this. I'm, I'm just waiting for a transfer once we get to K7. Mm. Well, I guess that's a good thing, then. Just uh, make sure that one behind you doesn't blow up on us. I can do that, sir. I think. Good, good. Then, uh, Mr. Cater, uh, what's uh, what's going on in sickbay? Anything I should know? Oh, uh, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, Lieutenant Cal Cater. Just want to say really happy to be here. Um, just uh, haven't read your minds. Uh, thought about it. <laughs> so, beta. All right. Nobody laughed. Cool. So, um, yeah, the EMH uh, commander, sir, uh, it does not appear to be turning on. As in at all? Like it's not even giving you a chime saying no? No, no, I, I tried to activate it because um, I heard there were emitters around the whole ship. So I wanted to see if it worked and it didn't. So um, if I could get somebody to look at it, that'd be cool. Huh. Yeah. The more I hear, the more I think we have, might have a faulty computer core on our hand. All right. Thank you, Lieutenant Cater. Uh, Lieutenant Verissa. And uh, Verissa uh, looks like a Vulcan at first glance. Uh, she, of course, has those stereotypical Vulcan pointed ears. Um, but after a few moments of looking at her, you probably would guess that she's either not Vulcan or it might actually just be a Romulan. The way she carries herself is different than sort of the high and mighty, I have no emotions type of Vulcan. Um, she has sort of shoulder length red hair that has streaks of black in it. Probably not regulation, but Marlo doesn't seem to care. Uh, but Verissa sort of almost laughs a little bit and says... Well, uh, nothing we really need to report on my end. Uh, I'm sort of like uh, Absy over there. I'm just here till uh, I can transfer off. Uh, I'm looking forward to my assignment on the uh, Ophion. And uh, Marlo laughs and says, all right, all right, fair enough. Uh, Alexio, anything we need to know on your end? All right, so um, Lieutenant Alexio is a very, he appears to be a very tall, thin, almost gaunt, um, and Dorian, he, uh, has a kind of a baby face, but, um, his eyes kind of give him away. It's not being Andorian. He, he has yellow eyes with a kind of a cat like slit instead of a normal iris, um, because he is a gamaloid shapeshifter rather than, uh, but the Andorian is a base state. And as uh, the commander calls on him, he's just like, uh, yes, um, I uh, would concur with the, the problems here. In fact, uh, I am also having a problem with the holographic crew. Um, they're not listening to me. Uh, I was doing very um, standard um, tests on them, um, asking them to 
fetch things for me from the replicator. Um, I was uh, telling them to do some uh, some scans for me, and uh, they they said that uh, that that wasn't what they were supposed to be doing. One of them even suggested that you had um, told them not to to listen to me anymore, which I knew was impossible and must have been some kind of glitch because uh, oh, oh you you would never do that. So. Um, I just wanted to call that to your attention that that they're being rather insubordinate and it must be a technical problem. Hmm. Yeah, I can't say I've ever heard of a holographic crew that was insubordinate from the get go. Maybe when they did that retrofit of the computer cores, something got in. It wouldn't be the first time. I mean, it is Starfleet. We have how many records of uh, ships going rogue like this? All right, uh, Lieutenant Tamarochka, uh, anything to report before we start an overhaul of the computer? And uh, Tamarochka uh, is a human woman. Uh, she has uh, somewhat of a uh, stylized white haircut uh, that just goes slightly past her shoulders. Uh, what really sticks out about her, though, is the fact that uh, she has artificial eyes um, to the point that just looking at her um, as they sort of flow from blue to yellow and back again, you're very easily able to tell that those are artificial eyes. And uh, she sort of carries herself as if she's always tired and overworked. And uh, she simply says, oh, Well, sir, I can confirm that everything else besides computer on ship is working. Uh, the, um, the power system, the EPS conduits are doing fine. Uh, the grav plating is working nominally and is uh, capable of Producing up to 3G of force if needed. Uh, I am noticing some problems with photonic applications. Uh, I am looking into it, but if uh, if what everyone is saying is true, perhaps problem is not with emitters, but with computer core. And uh, Marlowe sort of nods and says, Right, right. Uh, in that case, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started on. And he's cut off. As the ship uh, shakes for a moment and red alert automatically occurs. And Marlo says, all right, so, all right, people stations, what, what do we got going on here? Uh, sir, what do we do? I was hoping you would tell me, Lieutenant. Uh, what, anybody see anything? What's going on? And uh, Relur is first to report and she says, uh, Captain, I have a... Plasma storm coming at us at impossible speeds. Uh, it's a class not no class ten. Holy crap! Where did a class ten like that come from? I would like to run to the computer terminal and see if I can get a better scan of this nebula and see if we can maybe modulate the shields to protect us from it. Sure. Why don't you uh, do the first real roll of the game? Uh, reason, science, difficulty of one, Ooh. and if someone can get the Bastet's uh, sensor science. Um, I have a focus of sensor operations. Most that would definitely apply. Hell yeah! I got the ship. Let's get weird. All right. Hey! Good omen. Already two successes. All right. Oops. Hey, that's that's a very good first roll. Very nice. Yes. So, uh, with four successes on the board, I believe that gets you three momentum. You're up to four. Yeah, uh, what you're seeing, Lieutenant Cater, is that, yeah, there is a massive plasma storm, almost like a small nebula coming towards you. And as Relore said, it's a class 10. For reference, um, a class 9 is a problem for an intrepid class. You're not that much bigger than an intrepid class. So a class 10, it's almost like you throw like a dinghy into like a typhoon. It's not something you want to weather if you can help it. I will alert the captain very quickly about this. Captain, I, it's a class 10 nebula. We, we've got to get out of here. Maximum whatever. Move the ship, somebody. And the question is, does anybody speak up at this point? Yeah, then I suggest we recalibrate the trifold baryon displacement generator to generate a, an anti-field uh, that might reduce the uh, the kind of uh, turbulence we'll see from this nebula. 
And uh, Tamarochka speaks up. Well, whatever you are planning to do, do it quick. It will be on us in 30 seconds. And yeah, Question. Th- how quickly is the storm moving? Abnormally fast. We're talking like you guys are at a casual warp 7 right now. Somehow the storm itself is going warp 9.5. Plasma storms don't normally do that. Captain, the Prometheus class is one of the fastest starships in the fleet. We might actually be able to outrun it, even at warp 9.5. And Marlo kind of hems and haws, taking a precious few seconds and says, No, no. Uh, Droxine, Droxine, you said uh, you had a something you could do with the modulation. Do that, please. Aye, sir. And for that, it's going to be a daring and an engineering uh, difficulty of three. Uh, I will say that the Bastet will assist you with a structure engineering. Take a moment. Take a moment. <laughs> yeah, I'll use momentum. <laughs> I was just looking at my focuses to see if I had one. The answer is no. Uh, wait, composure. Can I use composure? Sure, I'll give you composure. Yes. And then what is the ship rolling? I'm going to roll for Brian. Structure oh, engineering. I didn't actually. Got it. I forgot to roll third dice. Structure and engineering. I yeah, we already, uh, Matthew already got it. Oh, he did? Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. We did it. Did you Did you spend a momentum, Wolf? I did for you, yes. Because I didn't all... use it, so no. take it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot. So yeah, with three successes, um, you type in a series of calculations and modulations to the manifolds, and uh, we're going to sort of imagine sort of an exterior shot of the Bastet flying through space, and in the distance behind the ship approaching rapidly is this swirling maw of pinks and blues that is moving erratically and abnormally um, to the point that if you were to pull it up on a view screen, um, you would almost swear that you see maybe like ghastly maws and otherwise sort of these uh, ab human like features to this cloud of gas and plasma that is headed towards you. But uh, what happens is, as the storm looks like it's about to consume and wash over the Bastet, um, the shields sort of flicker and become a greenish hue around the ship. And not a moment too soon, because this is when the plasma storm actually hits you. So, uh, I'm going to roll a number of challenge dice here. For every effect that I roll, there will be a breach to a certain system. So, because this is a class 10, I was going to give them 15 challenge dice, but because you were successful in modulating the shields, I will reduce that to only 12. So, let's see what happens. You're a benevolent god. (laughs) And, of course, as as we're seemingly doing in this game, I roll roll 8 effects. I... That that, that is impressive. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. Nice campaign, everyone. <laughs> well, then the ship blows up, and we're all dead. Hi. Well, no, this is uh, this is actually kind of good. All right, so what I would say is that uh, what's going to happen is the ship is consumed by the storm. Uh, the lights flicker, warning sirens and klaxons begin sounding. Uh, those of you that weren't in a seat or otherwise secured, you're thrown from your feet. Uh, and th- kind of thrown about as the uh, inertial dampeners seem to not be working properly. Um, the, you are quite literally in almost an elevator or roller coaster ride from hell as the ship is buffeted about this way and that. And uh, those of you that are near a console, the consoles begin sparking and bursting out. Uh, regulation rocks fall from the ceiling. Uh, a steel beam comes down and hits Marlow in the head, sending him sprawling to the ground. And uh, what I'm going to say is that you are going to take the following breaches. Uh, First things first, you're going to take three to your sensors. So if you would mark three breaches to your sensors. Uh, Then if you could take uh, two breaches to your comms, followed by one breach to your weapons, and then the remaining breaches, uh, two to your computers. All right, very good. So this buffeting goes back and forth for what feels like hours, but in reality is only maybe about a minute. 
and eventually the sort of the world around you stops being a tumultuous roller coaster tumbler dryer of hell and the lights flicker but slowly come back to full illumination and all of you begin picking yourselves up uh those of you that are medically inclined of course your immediate concern is marlo uh everybody else seems to be stunned but is otherwise mostly unharmed like maybe you have some bruises and some uh light scarring or plasma burns but nothing compared to marlo I would like to run a scan on on Commander Marlow right away to see if he still lives. All right. Uh, if you would roll me a reason medicine difficulty of one. The medicine. I have emergency medicine as a focus. Most definitely would apply here. Fantastic. All right. Well, that gets you two momentum. You're capped. Well, uh... The good news, well, let's start with the bad news. The bad news is if you do not get Marlo into stasis immediately, he's going to be donezo for good. Like, there's no way you're going to be able to bring him back. The good news is that if you make it to K7, they have facilities there that should be able to treat Marlo. I will announce that and yell for someone to please come help me get him into stasis. Question, uh, ELH, is mm -hmm. it possible for to uh, transport him directly to sickbay? Um, I would say you start to try to do so, but you start to get a damage report in, and the sensors are so damaged that they're just barely hanging on. Like, you're getting maybe 10, 25% thorough put. You could attempt to beam directly to sickbay, but it would be very difficult, is what I would say, and the complication range would be high. Doctor, how long does he have? Minutes! Maybe seconds. We, we got to get him there now. Do something. With that, then, I'm going to try to work around the uh, damage to the sensors in order to beam him and the doctor directly to sickbay. Okay. I will attempt to aid by rerouting uh, sensor power through the uh, holographic grid, which should have uh, low-level sensors, but they should be working all over the internal of the ship. Indeed. I love it. So this is going to be a control and engineering from both of you. Uh, the ship would assist you with a sensors engineering. Difficulty on this is going to be a five. We have so much momentum. Burn it. Burn it, baby. Um, I'll use augmented ability control for a free success. Okay. Uh, I'll buy two dice using three momentum, if that's okay with everyone. Love yep. it. Do it. Okay. Oh, I deleted somebody. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'll, uh, I'll put them back. Don't worry. I'm so sorry. Dude, hey! <laughs> I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I died. And then I came back. <laughs> All right. Weird. So it looks like we have three successes, which means uh, I need to see a crit from the ship. Sensors engineering. I got it. No. All right. So I'm going to say, what? unless, uh, do you want to spend your determination there, uh, Tavarin? I think that I will, uh, okay. and I will tap the value. Um, I guess dangerously competitive because I see that uh, uh, the other lieutenant is attempting to assist me, and I want to actually show him up in my performance here. So okay. it's a horribly selfish motivation. No, I love it. So I will reroll that with 2d20 and applicable focus. Yeah, so even with the reroll, you only get the four successes. So I think what happens is even with your workarounds, you're just not able to get a stable target lock. So you didn't, have the option. Didn't you have one free success? Oh, you're right. From control, yep. from augmented control. Right, yes. From your, yeah, 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 from the down. down. So that's, yeah. But All that right. makes one of those a complication. Yes. So that is the thing. So both <laughs> Cater and Marlo are going to be into sick bay. Uh, however, the complication is going to be that the moment you finish beam out, the beam out, pro the beam out process finishes. Um, what you notice is that the transporters uh, immediately are knocked offline, uh, probably because the computer has gone into shutdown mode. As this is happening, I would like to run to a console and check the status of the warp core itself, make sure we still have power. Okay. Uh, roll me a insight in engineering, please. Difficulty of two. Is 
say, everyone okay if I take one more momentum for an mm -hmm. extra die? Yep. I love it. And then warp the field dynamics? Yeah, as a, that applies. Just as a rule of thumb, I can handle the momentum for the game moving forward. I just did oh. it. You go with it. That way no one else fusses with it. Okay. All right. Hey, three successes, which means you get the momentum right back. Uh, you want the good news or you want the bad news? Let's start with the bad news. Okay. Bad news is that uh, you're no longer at warp and that uh, you're seeing problems with the alpha and beta cores. Uh, not in any like super like warp core breach territory, but definite maintenance needs to be done on them now. But uh, if what you're seeing is correct, the stars aren't where they should be. Something's not right here. And Verissa oh, okay. comes up to you. Uh, what? What's? What? What do you? What? What's going on? Ooh. Alpha and beta cores aren't operating correctly. And take a look at the star field outside. And she kind of looks at it. Okay. Uh, astro navigation was never my strength, but. Uh, hey, uh, Tamarochka, what? What do you feel about all this? And uh, Tamarochka comes over to uh, also stare at the, uh, the console. She kind of squints her eyes and says, uh, that can't be... Droxine, are you seeing this too? I heard someone say astro navigation. What, what, what are we looking at? Well, look, the stars aren't where they should be. But this is... Uh, that shouldn't be possible. And as uh, that group is working on it, uh, Lieutenant Mir actually approaches uh, Lieutenant Alexio. And I'd like to imagine, like, maybe you're still on the floor there. And she kind of offers out a, yeah. uh, a a helping hand up. Oh, Mir, thank you. And I'll pull myself up. Uh, th th is the captain fine? Um, I t honestly, I'm not sure. The, uh, the doctor and he beamed to sickbay. I, I hope they're all right. Uh, are you okay? Uh, well, only my bride seems to be wounded. This is uh, this is interesting, isn't it? And I'll look over at what the little crowd is doing over there, and it's like it appears we might not be where we started. And uh, she actually starts chuckling, which might seem a little bit odd thing to do in a time like this, but she says. <laughs> It uh, it reminds me of a time when my uh, third host ended up finding a, a subspace rupture. Uh, maybe I can tell you that story when uh, we're not in crisis mode. Hmm. Well, yeah, most certainly over a drink, hopefully. Mm. And then I, I'm like, for now, I think it'd be fun to sort of uh, watch it all play out. Don't you think? Source, uh, let's let's try to be a little bit helpful. But I do agree, it is a little bit fun to watch those four go at it. Fair. And I'm going to turn to my console and see if um, I can actually, knowing that we're not sort of where we are supposed to be, see if I can kind of like figure out our position. Sure. Uh, this would be a reason and a con. Uh, you may be assisted by the ship's sensors and con. Uh, the difficulty on this because of the damage to the sensors will be a three. I got the ship. All right. Um, hey, hmm. Well, the ship already got a crit, so that's good news. That is good news. This isn't my highest traits, though. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll just roll. I'll see. I'll see what the dice has in store. Okay. So it will be a reason con. All right, All right, that's four successes, which means you get uh, one momentum. So, Alexio, I mean, this isn't maybe your strong suit, but if what you're seeing is correct, the reason the stars aren't in the right position, no, that can't be it. And you, you actually double-check your work and double-check what uh, remains on the computer. If what you're seeing is true, the position of the stars is consistent with what they were in the year 2268. 
I um, burst out laughing at my console. And I'm like, well, fellow crew, it appears we have a time travel situation on our hands. And Tomorochi, Tomorochka looks up and goes, I'm sorry, what? What? No, 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 no. Guys, no, 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 no. I'm transferring to the Enterprise. Next Friday. You can't have a time travel issue. <laughs> and Tamarochka almost pushes Abbas, Abbas, Abbasy out of the way and frantically kind of her fingers dance across the console. And then she looks at it, pauses, then slams her fist down on the railing next to the console and goes, Well, damn it. That is correct. We are somehow in year 2268. Don't worry, Droxine. We could spend a month out here and have you uh, have you back five minutes before we left. Yeah, Night but I travel. don't want to be on this backwater ship. I want to be on the Enterprise. Guys, I worked really hard for that posting. And uh, R'hllor speaks up and shouts, Well, uh, you could still be on the Enterprise if you want. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I lay it on me. How? And uh, she does something, and this is something I'd like to sort of introduce as a concept uh, that I think I haven't really used in my game so far. But um, since you do have holographic emitters on every deck of the ship, I think it's one of those things when you need to like call attention to something. Like you don't need to actually crowd around a console. You can just sort of do it in midair. So what happens is R'hllor, uh puts up an image of the Starbase K7 where you were supposed to be going. Uh, she shows that on the screen, and then you sort of see in midair uh, this holographic image of K7, and then a Constitution-class vessel, literally the very first, oh. not the first Enterprise, the USS Enterprise 1701 uh, <laughs> comes out of warp and begins orbiting K7. Oh. And you, you see that Lieutenant Favarin is just absolutely thrilled as he is staring in awe at this piece of history that is uh, being displayed before them. Uh, likewise, Lieutenant Bossy has pretty much the exact same expression as he's staring at it. Well, I mean, that's that's the Enterprise. That's that's vintage. Montgomery Scott was the chief engineer on that. Oh, if we could just sit down and talk to him for ten minutes. Can you imagine just the wealth of knowledge, of, of inspiration that he could give to us? Uh, no, if you're going to talk to somebody on that ship, it should be Sulu. Uh, the pilot, that's the guy. Plus, he was captain within about uh, six years after his service on the Enterprise. That's a fast track if I've ever seen one. Captain, what's the point of that? Why would you ever leave engineering? Uh, because then I get to tell the ship where to go whenever I want. As an engineer, you get to make sure that the ship actually gets where it's going. Yeah, th I'll tell you to make that happen. Captain before I'm 40. That's my career track. 35 if I'm lucky. Well, it's good to have ambitious goals, I guess. <laughs> I mean, um, I, guess, I guess we all set our sights where we're, uh, where we're able, I guess. We all serve where we're best suited captain okay you know this begs the question though if this is where we are if this is when we are are we still going what happens to us bringing What's... this ship to k7 now if i understand your readings correctly we're not taking this ship anywhere the yeah, some and this is tamarocha again this um we're um kind of dead in the water at the moment. Uh, we're nearly blind. The uh, computer core is barely functioning. Uh, weapons are doing not so hot. But the uh, good news is that uh, sensors on old Enterprise and K7 are so antiquated they cannot detect us out this far. Um, but um, yes, um, we probably should not create paradox. It um, would have unknowable effects on timeline. Oh, didn't the cap uh, commander need uh, need medical help? He does. Oh, well, we can't just let him die, can we? Are there any or shuttles on the ship? Uh, there are shuttles on the ship. Yes. Yes, we could probably outfit a shuttle with some hologra with some uh, holographic generators and uh, send out a ship that look a star uh, blue 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 
a shuttle that looks like an antiquated shuttle. Hmm. How far from K7 are we currently? Uh, you're approximately two light years away. So all things considered a quick skip and a jump for a Prometheus class, but uh, for like a TOS era ship, might as well be across the quadrant. Would a shuttle, a TOS era shuttle, even be able to make that trip? Uh, a TOS shuttle, no. A TNG shuttle, yes. Oh, so yeah. TOS we shuttles don't, don't have the warp engines. We don't want to show up there in a shuttle. I mean, unless we just drop out of warp outside their sensor range and then get... Listen, this is a man's life. I'm willing to risk a little paradox uh, or having to explain myself to make the, sure that the commander lives. Uh, friends, let me look into something real quick. And um, I want to quickly just scan the um, the the logs like Starfleet logs um, for any like anomalous events that happened around this time around K7, like whether there is actually a history of something of like a weird stranger showing up needing medical attention. Okay. Um, uh, I would say this would be a control and a command and the ship will assist you with a computers in command. And what would the difficulty be? That's what I'm debating. Uh, let's make it a difficulty of two. All right. Um, I got ship again. All right. Well, you got I... an assist from the ship. Because again, these are not my... Mm. It wasn't the ship's focus either. <laughs> it's not great at that. Go on. All right. Hey, you get the two successes you need. So what you find is no record that would look to be the same of what you're looking for. However, what you do see is that there is some form of a flag centered around this state in particular that is of a captain's eyes only notification uh, type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't have the clearance to access it, basically. Correct. However, if we got enough senior officers, I mean, if you, if you gotta tell us first. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I'll, I'll just everyone over and be like, uh, it, it appears that um, our appearance might already have made a splash in the timeline. Uh, I, I need a little help though, accessing the, the juicy details as it were. Well, with uh, acting captain down, the chief medical officer has the ability to appoint someone captain in the interim, unless, is somebody listed as second in command as our first officer? And uh, Varissa speaks up and says, honestly, uh, I think it was just Marlowe. I, I don't think we really established a chain of command. And uh, Cater, at this point, uh, you can feel free to either beam back, walk back, etc. But you've got Marlowe safely in stasis at this point. You can't beam back. The transfers are down. Yeah, this is I true. Do that. So, like, however long it takes me to get back, there's a ting, 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 ting. Like, That's right about now that door. you'd, you'd ting, be able ting, to ting, walk ting. back. Hey, hey, guys, can you hear me? I... The doors aren't working. I've had to like force open six. My arms are tired. Abasi's gonna walk over to the door. Uh, someone want to give me a hand with this one? I'll uh, join him. Okay. Just, oh, is that grab on, just grab onto one side and open it. All right. So the two of you working together, you get the door open and uh, Cater, welcome back to engineering. <laughs> All right, guys, great news. Um, the captain is fine. Well, I mean, he's not fine. We've got to get him to the station. Um, are we almost we're there the, yet? We're in the past. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that uh, plasma storm. We're in the past. Like, at least we think it's the plasma storm. We don't really know yet. I, Operationally, though, what we need you to do is can you declare the captain medically unfit and then declare one of us captain, please? What? I, I chuckle for a moment. I, I, is this some kind of joke? Like, are you guys razzing me right now? I don't. Uh, this isn't gonna... really the time for this sort of dark humor. While I appreciate it, I. Abasi's going to turn to the closest console and 
pull up the readings that they already found. Look. Hmm. Well, I'll be. All right. Uh, I declare the the uh, the captain medically unfit. I don't know how to do this. Um, uh, computer. All oh, right, the computer's down. Um, let me see if I can repair at least that function. Okay. Uh, does any does anybody want to be acting captain? Not me, please. Uh, I don't want to do it. Okay. Um, does Brian fix the computer function? We're about to roll for that. Um... <laughs> I actuate the backup spatial phased catalyst for the computer, which should give us surface level and operational access without rebooting the entire computer. So we've got like all the the key. Um... Anyway, the function. The base... I know where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, can I assist with this? Yeah, if you tell me how you're assisting. I'm going to jump onto one of the other computer consoles and try and keep an even flow of power flowing through. Okay. Uh, so both of you are going to be doing a daring engineering here. Um, the difficulty will be set at a three, but uh, I'm going to spend two threat to increase the complication range to an 18 to 20. Uh, I do not have a focus. I would like to spend a, a, not a determination, a momentum to get an extra dice, please. Okay. I said I'm only rolling one die on this, correct? Yes, because you're assisting. Do I get a focus for my computer systems? You most definitely do. And also, I do have the talent advisor. Uh, that I think only applies when you use your command. I could be wrong. Let me double check here. But I think it's only when you assist using your command. Sounds right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's see. Talents overview. Well, I got two. Yeah, it is when you use your command discipline that advisor hey! comes into play. Oh, I got Captain Keith! Wait, I, right. wait, I have untapped potential, so I get to roll a challenge dice. Oh, yeah, we so spent totally the momentum. That. Yeah. I'm totally and, forgetting it. Uh, if I roll, I get whatever the total is on the dice. Uh, I didn't add the, the challenge dice. Uh, just a sec. Yeah. I'm going to add that. The that, uh, that is four successes, so you automatically do get at least one momentum back. And I actually get threat. And you, you get a threat. A, you rolled, <laughs> a, rolled an effect there. Very nice. I say, do I roll that with, an, with the uh, assist too? Uh, no, but let's try and remember moving forward that if you spend momentum and or threat on a roll because of your untapped potential, um, just remember to do the challenge die because it leads yeah. to momentum and threat. I yeah. only remember because uh, Groundskeepers has an untapped potential and we roll it a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would like to imagine that you guys are futzing around with this <laughs> and the computer system comes back on and you're having issues. And then um, the kitty cat man, I love this, kitty cat man is like, oh, wait, you just have to do this. Boop. And then I react and go, hell yeah, Captain Kitty. And then the computer thinks you're the captain. I'm spending two threat. That's exactly what happens. I mean, So the computer would... in kind of a garbled, almost like Shodan-like voice kind of stutters and goes, C -c confirmed abc command wait what oops well <laughs> you should be able to we can we'll fix it later just now you can should be able to see what the log says uh, okay you have um, captain command access let's see if it works uh yes please captain kitty uh, i'm dying of suspense <laughs> oh boy Oh, please don't call me that. Right. Abasi walks over to the console and sees if it works. Yeah, and actually it responds as if you had captain level access. Uh, and what it shows is that there is a notice from the Department of Temporal Investigations that doesn't go into detail, but does mention that the USS Defiant was supposedly present at this stardate uh in this era doesn't go into how the defiant ended up there in the first place doesn't detail what actions were undertaken it just simply says for emergency knowledge only that the uss defiant is here <sighs> uh, 
I saddle up next to Captain Kitty. So what'd you find out, sir? Captain? Well, apparently there's record of the USS Defiant being here. Wait, like, wait, wait, like record from this time period that the USS Defiant was here or record from the USS Defiant's time that they, like, are they still in our past, but they would be closer to the present, our present? Like, is this a way home? I really need to make that appointment with the Enterprise E. Uh, I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, temporal mechanics aren't really my thing. Well, uh, it's a good thing you have me then. And Tamarochka kind of pushes you out of the way again. You you get the sense that uh, Tamarochka doesn't really care for a chain of command or she just doesn't like personal space. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, Tamarochka kind of shoulders you out of the way, looks at the screen and goes, okay, so answer to eager question from Droxine. Uh, no, this is uh, Defiant from DS9. Uh, would be in past of ours, but... Um, Supposedly, uh, yes, this um, this could be way home. However, um, again, I would I would question whether or not we should make contact, simply because um, again, paradox. Yeah, but we need to get the commander to the medical station. And it's, it's at this that point that uh, Lieutenant uh, Relour speaks up and goes, "Um, I'm just gonna throw this out there." We're on a Prometheus class. Literally, we have the most advanced sick bay in the fleet. We're now looking at an antiquated K7. What are wait, they going to have that we don't? Somebody pull the USS Defiance records from that time. Is Was Bashir on this mission? Because that guy was a really great doctor. No offense, uh, Cater. I'm um, taken. And yeah, I think, I'll... Uh, um... Okay. Yeah, I'll try and pull the records, see if if the Defiance records have anything more specific. We may be able to hail the Defiant, have them get Dr. Bashir over here. Dr. Bashir can save the commander. Yeah, actually, I think what I want to do is see if we can scan for the Defiant. Okay. That would be a sensors and a security for the ship. Uh, for you, it would be a reason I, and a security. Do I see him do that? I think you would see him start to do it. Yes. If you're going yeah, to scan, if you're going to scan for the ship, uh, scan for a Romulan deflector. Because I, if I remember my uh, history, my history class, uh, I think they outfitted it with a Romulan deflector. You're <laughs> really into this stuff. Romulan aren't you? cloaking device. Sorry. He's right, and a Defiant class ship produces an inordinate amount of power for a vessel its size. Uh, it should be detectable with our advanced sensors, although they're damaged. Under normal circumstances, we might be able to pick up their power signature even through the cloaking device, but I don't know if we can. Um, what's the what's the difficulty going to be here? Uh, I'm going to set the difficulty here at a five. At a five? Ooh, okay. So I... You have broken sensors. They have a cloaking device. You know, yeah. it stacks up. Mm -hmm. So l let me at least... I think what I'm going to actually do is I want to spend a determination. Okay. Um, I think I want to spin um, um, my instincts serve me well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that would be two. And then... I th I'm hoping that that will get me through. Would a focus in, let's see what I have. None of my focuses really apply here. Yeah, I'm looking at them. I can't really see a good justification mm -hmm. for getting them to apply, unfortunately. All right, so how much would it cost for me to have another die then? Uh, it would be two momentum or two threat. Can I spend two momentum for for another one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then don't forget to roll your challenge die afterwards. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, hey there's your five, five successes. Uh, does the ship get you any more? What's the ship rolling? Sorry. Sensor uh, sensor security.
No. Okay, so the good thing is it didn't roll a complication. So what happens, uh, Alexio, is at first you're not seeing the Defiant. Like maybe either the cloaking device um, just is too strong. You know, you're not seeing any abnormal power spikes. When you're about to give up and report that, when all of a sudden two things happen at the same time. The first is that a Klingon warship decloaks and begins orbiting K7 as well. Uh, this is a contemporary vessel, or at least for 2268. Uh, you do know that this is the IKS Goroth, and you know that it's supposed to be here, like this is part of the timeline. Um, what you also see is that as that happens, there is a abnormal flux in chronotons, and almost like a burst, uh, like someone set off a chronoton torpedo, uh, more or less about, I would say maybe about half a light year f away from K7, um, that could potentially be the Defiant emerging into this time period, but your sensors are too damaged to tell whether or not the Defiant is actually at that position, or if it's cloaked and approaching, like, you just know that it's here. All right, and I'll rattle out all that information. Well, Captain, I think it's time for you to make some decisions because what are we working on fixing first? Comms are down, computers are down, sen uh, sensors are down, and the engine is down. So All right, we need we need to get comms up and running if we want to make any sort of contact to the Defiant, if that is indeed what it is. We need our computers up and running we're a small crew, but there are multiple engineers here. We can work on several things at one time. I will go handle computers. And uh, Mir speaks up and says, yeah, I'll, I'll go help uh, the good lieutenant. Oh, that's, that's going to be weird. Are, are we just going to have to call each other lieutenant, lieutenant, lieutenant? I mean, we are all lieutenants, aren't we? I, oh. I believe Starfleet regulation states that he is acting captain, so we can call him captain. Well, regardless of what Cation calls himself is not my concern. My concern is getting the computer up and running. Uh, Mir, come with me. And uh, Mir and uh, Tom Tomarochka uh, exit and head for the computer core. I'll work on comms. I'll try to get the sensors back online. I guess I'll work on propulsion. That's kind of what I, I know best. And I can work on repairing weapons. And uh, Ray Lure speaks up and says, uh, I'll help you with that, Alexio. And kind of sidles over to you. Much appreciated. I can help with sensors. I'm pretty good with them. Let's Russell, take anything you want to help me with the uh, engines? So, I've got the engines. Oh, I'm working on comms. Right. I don't remember what I'm doing, it turns out. All right. So uh, we're going to do kind of a montage here, uh, but before we go to break and do said montage, uh, Lieutenant Verissa actually kind of sidles up to you, uh, Abbasi, and kind of leans in and says, um, I, can I have a, a word? Okay. And uh, she kind of pulls you over to like a corner of engineering and says, uh, listen, uh, if what we saw in that record was true, and I understand how temporal stuff works, I, I profess I'm not really great at it, but if this is what's going on, we can't actually use the Defiant because it would create a paradox of them knowing about us, which would then suggest that we don't find our way back home via the Defiant. You see where I'm going with this? He just kind of stands there for a minute and just... <sighs> yeah, I see where you're going. So, my thought is that Klingon warship, the uh, IKS Groth, it's got a cloaking device. As far as we know, the Klingons lose cloaking devices all the time. Maybe we should steal it. Very Romulan. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I'll consider it. Well, 
Should you decide that uh, we should infiltrate, uh, that is kind of my skill set. It is what I'm good at. I'll... I can't believe I'm even considering this. I'll let you know what I figure. Well, uh, that's all I really had. Uh, I'll go help Droxine with uh, comms. All right, go, go give him some help. All right. And as she steps away and maybe Abbasy is uh, sort of contemplating events, uh, we're going to take a five to ten minute break. So uh, we will be back very shortly. Stick around.
and we're back from break a little bit early because uh, we got a whole lot of things to cover. So, as promised before break, uh, we are going to enter into a montage sequence of sorts where we're going to get a little bit of repair work done. Uh, we're going to first start with Lieutenant Cater and Lieutenant Tavarin. Uh, if I understand correctly, you all are working on sensors, is that correct? Mm hmm All right. So, and this is going to apply to everyone, so pay extra attention to this. You have the option of either working to create a jury rig solution, uh, which would get your sensors back up and running at full capacity. The downside of this is if you do jury rig at the end of this session, or at least at the end of this like miniature adventure, whatever we're calling it, um, your sensors will then go offline and you'd be back where you started. So that's option one. Option two is that you can repair up to one breach if you succeed at your task. Now, that still means that your sensors in this instance would be damaged, but it would mean that you would have more thorough put and more of a chance uh, at repairing down the road, if that makes any sense. On a personal level of character, I think I would be trying to follow the Starfleet manual to the book or uh, to the letter. So I would not be trying to jury rig the system. It would be uh, entirely procedurally compliant. Okay. How does uh, how does Cater feel about that? Phenomenal question. I'm glad you asked. You know, if we actually just uh, put together the uh, let's see, the uh, uh, if we just re-synced the primary plasma inverter stabilizer, we can get the sensors up and running. You know, at least for like maybe a day or so, and they'd be at full power. I mean, they'd go back to where they were. So let's just do that. Do you want to blow out the EPS relays through all 27 decks of the ship? Uh, I mean, that's, uh, with all due respect, Doctor, maybe you should stick to actually your field of expertise and leave me to mine. Okay, first off, rude. Second of all, you're probably right, so we'll do it your way. I look very defeated. Nice. Uh... It's not like the idea didn't have merit. It's just, we do things by the book, Follow protocol, and we'll get out of the situation just fine. <laughs> and he, Thavarin does not hear that at all. He just gets the muttering, and you see that his, uh, almost like his jowls begin to flare up and then retract down again. And he goes back to his work. So, uh, Tavarin and Cater, I need a control, because you are going by the book, this is going to be a control engineering uh, difficulty on this will be a three, and you may assist each other on this. Uh, what I would I say is you. that... Oh, go ahead, sorry. I was going to ask. I, I'm assuming I'm assisting you, Matt. I think so, yeah. Cool, yeah, because I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> My engineering is a one. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, so, I guess shipboard tactical systems wouldn't apply. Uh, I don't really have any focuses no. here. Computers? I, I could give you a computer, sure. Sensor and operations? Sensor operations would definitely apply. Not that it matters, because if you have an engineering of one, you would already crit on a one, so... Just give me this ELH. Just give me this moment. <laughs> I just need the moment. Sure. Augmented ability control? Sure. And uh, I will buy an extra die using momentum. Okay. So that is already Damn. four successes. Very, very nice. Five with augmented. Five with augmented, yep. Roll your challenge dice. Oh, yes. Mm. Do I want to do that? <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't want to do that. Nice. I, that's why I never take uh, untapped potential. All right, so uh, that is six successes, which means uh, you get three momentum, so you're up to four. And yeah, Tavarin, uh, since you said you were doing things by the book, you may remove one breach from sensors. Now, that isn't enough to get your advanced sensors back up to full capacity, but you are much closer than you almost were. Like, you were on the brink of them being destroyed kind of a thing. I don't suppose that we could create an advantage to either make it more easy to, I don't know, repair the power systems because of the extra work that we've done or remove another breach. Is that uh, mechanically possible? Uh, yeah, if you give me two momentum, either one of those would be something you could do. In fact, I will sort of tempt you if you give me all four of your momentum right now, you can totally fix the sensors. 
no. <laughs> I, I have a question. Is he technically the chief engineer right now? Um, I know where that question's coming from because you're wondering if he gets the bonus of uh, being More in engineering. Um, what I would say is that the only person that has a defined role, well, I guess there's two defined roles here. Cater is the doctor, so he has the abilities of the CMO. Abbasi is the captain, so they have the abilities of the captain. Everybody else right now is kind of in flux. Nobody. All right. Yeah. I like where your mind's at, Brian. <laughs> so do you want to spend those two momentum to remove one extra breach, or...? Let's give them all the momentum. Come on. Let's just do it. We get our advanced sensor Let's suits go back. Big. Let's just, go just, big. just think how well that would reflect on you as a as a yeah an officer if you managed to fix three breaches in one fell swoop. <laughs> Captain Kitty's going to be so proud. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm curious, uh, since you've spent the momentum, how do you how does uh Cater and how does Tavarn report this to Abbasy? Uh Tavarin then would uh, tap his comm badge uh, after reviewing the work and double checking all the various different uh I guess uh, rerouted connections that he has installed throughout the uh, sensor grid. Uh this is uh, Lieutenant Tavarin to the acting captain. Uh, go ahead, Lieutenant. We've actually made remarkable progress. Uh, apparently, this overdesigned hunk of junk is actually a better ship than I thought. All the redundant systems yoked between the three sections of the, uh, the Bastet actually have allowed us to restore full sensor functionality. The advanced sensor suites are back online. Amazing job. Uh, come back down to main engineering. We can get working on some other systems. Yes, sir. Up next, we're going to look at Alexio and Relor. And uh, Alexio, uh, I'm going to offer you sort of that same sort of compromise. Uh, remind me, though, you were working on which system Weapons. again? Weapons. Weapons. Okay. So, yeah, uh, for you, this would be... is Well, let me ask. Are you going by the book or are you being a little bit reckless? Uh, jury rigging. Jury rigging. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Relor sees what you're doing and kind of says, you know what? I like where your head's at. You know, this uh, this uh, Prometheus class is over-designed to all hell. Uh, but if we need to get into a fight, uh, we need to get into a fight kind of a thing. Also, um, I hope you don't mind. Uh, she sort of taps her head. I get the sense that uh, you're really nervous around me. Hmm. Well, um... I'm nervous around all attractive females, and I just continue to uh, do my work. But it's um, it's it's not a, it's not a great lie. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things where Lore, you know, lets that pass, and then after you think that she's let it go, she actually chuckles to herself and says, "Oh, I see. You're embarrassed because I can see the true you." Ah. Shape shifters and mind readers, I think, uh, 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 natural born rivals, wouldn't you say? I would agree with that. And uh, if it's worth anything to you, I, uh, I actually think that uh, I would agree that uh, sometimes I wish I could just turn this tele telepathy and empathy off. I feel like sometimes I'd be better for it. <laughs> no, please don't. Um... Don't despise the things that make you better than other people. That's how they have been keeping people like us uh, down for, for, for so long. It's the way that the Federation makes us a part of their machine. Better in a way. Well, let's see what we can do about these weapons. And yeah, uh, Alexio, since you are doing it a little bit off the book, uh, yours is going to be a daring and engineering. And Relore will assist you. If someone could grab her sheet, she is also doing a daring engineering. Uh, difficulty on this, because you only have one breach, is just a two. All right. And I have a focus in jury rigging. 
most definitely would apply. So I got one. Got the one. Does Relore get you the two you need? Is uh is someone getting Relore? I thought I got, Brian was. I got it. It just took me a minute. Gotcha. And you can roll your challenge die as well to see if you get momentum back if you want to risk giving uh, Mike more threat. <laughs> uh, I didn't use momentum. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Nope, uh, she, does, she does not have a focus, I don't think. Nah, no, nah, not for this, unfortunately. Ooh. All right, so I think what's uh, going to no. happen then is uh, Alexio and Relora, I mean, the two of you working together, you try a jury rig, you try bypassing the systems, but... Yeah, you're still stuck with that one breach to weapons. So it doesn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. But, I mean, your phasers and your torpedoes still work. But you just have that one breach. So maybe you can't use, like, the lateral arrays on the beta section kind of a thing. Hmm. Fair enough. I kind of, like, raise an eyebrow at her. It's like, well, this is this is what happens when you stick the empath and changeling together. I don't know. I kind of like it. It's uh, it's nice to be around someone whose thoughts are uh, not as hectic as uh, that uh, that doc of ours. I I get the sense he's a uh, real busybody. Yes, actually, this is a, a ship full of neurotics. I have to say. <laughs> I like that neurotics. I love it. <laughs> uh so are you going to tell the acting captain, or should I? I will. Because you've you've been so nice, uh, I'll I'll take the heat on this one, and I'll batch myself through to um, through the, to the acting captain. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry to report that we uh, didn't quite uh, fix the breach on the weapon system. However, the damage is relatively light compared to other systems. It's working. It's just going to take a bit more work before we get it back up to full capacity. So if we need them, power is available for the weapons. Yes. All right. Hopefully we don't need them, but if we do, we'll make do with what we have. Yes, and uh, you can take comfort in the fact that we have something probably far more advanced than uh, uh, anything uh, the people now have. That is true. (laughs) That is true. All right, if you're going to keep working, keep working. If not, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you have a lot on your mind, Captain. I'll let you go. All right, Abasi out. And Relora kind of chuckles and says, well, he's a fun one. Is that going to bite? You think well, that's going to come back to bite us at some point? Well, I mean, I didn't want to do it. Did you? No, God, no, no. Um, honestly, I uh, I would have thought that uh, Mir, if anyone, would have taken over because they uh, they have the most experience. I mean, eight lives that's that's significant. But, yes, but um, uh, I think she's also uh, smarter than wanting to be in a position where you're basically set up to fail. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Well, uh, hand me that hyperspanner, and uh, let's see if we can do anything else. All right. Yep, and we'll just keep working on that. All right. We now cut to Droxine and Lieutenant Verissa, and I've decided I'm going to try an accent for Verissa just to make her sound a little bit more unique. <laughs> um, so uh, let's have that little conversation between those two. So Droxine, by the book, jury rigging? Oh, jury rig for sure. I want to try and fix them all the way so that I can contact the defiant. Get back on, get back to the present, uh, and then make my rendezvous with the Enterprise E. All right. So as you start to put that in action, uh, Varissa kind of puts a, a not a strong hand, but a very firm hand on your shoulder, as if to stop you and say, "I don't mean to be a bother, but I notice you're, uh, well, to put it bluntly, um." If you do what I think you're doing, you're going to blow out the communication relays between not only 
alpha and beta section, but between all sections of the ship. Yeah, but if we manage to get back to the to the present, then we'll be within range of a starbase, and we'll just be able to refix them in about twenty minutes. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, I'm hopeful that if we get communications all the way back up, we'll be able to get back on the Defiant. Uh, we'll make it back to K7 in the present, and then uh, we should be fine. Well, about that, um, you are aware the Defiant here isn't necessarily of our time, correct? Right. We think it's from previous to us. But it, but if they've got a way to get through the... If they've got a way to generate some sort of time ripple, then we should be able to use whatever their method is to get to our time. Well, I don't really know what the circumstances of the Defiant are, but what I would say is that um, from what I do know, I'm you must excuse me, I only paid half attention in Temporal 101, I don't think it's quite that easy. Listen, we don't even need to contact the Defiant necessarily. If we can keep the Commander in stasis long enough that the Defiant goes back to its time, we can use the communications to monitor what they're talking about, even if we can get a hack on their internals, uh, then we might be able to track what it is they're doing that gets them back to their time, which means we can do it to get back to ours. Well, But we'll need the communications ray to be on, to be fully functional for that. I would say that uh, I'm not above, above a little spy craft, but um, you wish to be a bit more subtle, I think. And uh, she kind of reaches past you and taps a few buttons. And she shows you an entirely different way of doing things. It's still going to accomplish what you want, but it's way less intense. Like, you were brute forcing. Hers is like almost like a Beethoven symphony in how almost beautiful it looks. Oh, Varessa, I like you. This is... I agree. This is a much... I should have... You know what? I should have listened in the first place, and I apologize. Uh, Next time, absolutely. Correct me if I am wrong. Hmm. I will certainly hold you to it. And yeah, uh, give me a, another daring engineering. Uh, let's see, you have two breaches. Difficulty, let's do difficulty of four on this one. Uh, I'm going to spend a threat so I can have an extra dice. Okay. Um, and I, can, I use the, oh, can I use the value? I'm going to use the spend a determination and mm-hmm. t- tap the value. I just want to get home to my girl. Okay. Who is the Enterprise E, by the way, I've decided. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be the Enterprise E. It has to be. Uh, so the only thing I would say is that you would have to give me another threat for this. Uh, the, oh, right, right. Yep, yep, yep. In which case, I'll give you two threat. Um, okay. However, I don't think I have a focus for this, sadly. Okay. Uh, but uh, what I do know is that Varessa does have a focus. Uh, she has infiltration as a focus. Um, so if someone wants to get her daring engineering as an assist, I can do that. Ooh. Okay, that's three successes with a complication. However, I get two momentum back. Okay, all right. Uh, so that is four successes with Varessa's help. Complication, complication. Ah, yes, I know. So... You are able to jury-rig the communicators or the communications array so that they work fully. However, what happens is in doing so, you send out what is essentially a sonar ping, which for those who don't know, um, a sonar ping is almost a death sentence to any ship if there are enemies in the area because everybody can hear a sonar ping. Everybody can hear it. So Varessa kind of sees that and goes, oh dear. Um, well, that's going to be a problem. Druxine to acting Captain Abbasi. Go ahead, Druxine. Well, I have good news and I have bad news. Uh, which would you like to hear first? Uh, just tell me. Okay, so the good news is communications, totally right back up. We can actually use all the communications that we need. Uh, comms array, totally bam, bam, bam. Just going, just going, it's good. Um, on the other hand, the bad news is, uh, I really hope you got the weapons back online because, uh, we may have just sent out a, a signal to the entire system that we're here. I mean, like, not, not, like, not like a message. It's not like I got on the comms and was like, hey, everybody, here we are. Uh, more like a, I sent out a ping. Okay. Uh, okay. 
we'll we'll be fine. Uh, uh, just as an aside, uh, I kind of jury rigged the communication, so that won't last long. Okay, bye. Boop. <laughs> Nice. And, uh, Lieutenant Abasi to Lieutenant Alexio. Alexio here. Retry whatever you were trying to do with the weapons. We may need them soon. Captain, is there a threat approaching? Possibly. And Relora leans in and whispers in Alexio's ear so that the captain can't hear. He uh, he's uh, he's he's having a little bit of a crisis of faith right now. Uh, maybe say something encouraging, Captain. The weapons may not be fully operational, but I will tell you right now that they are functional and that we can blow anything from this time period out of the water. If you think that there's a security threat approaching, maybe uh, it might be good to to call us all together. Uh, talk about how to, to handle this. You're not on your own here, my man. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, make your way to the bridge. Maybe we can finally get onto it with my clearance. See you in a bit. Abasi out. Now, uh, since Mir and uh, our Russian friend are NPCs, I'm not actually going to play out their scene because it would just be me talking to myself. Uh, but we are still going to be doing the roles for them. Uh, so if someone can get Mir and someone can get Tamarochka, uh, they're going to be doing things I'll by the Mir. book. Uh, so if you guys can give me, let's have Tamarochka lead this one. Uh, Tamarochka is rolling control engineering, so is Mir. And uh, their difficulty is also a four. Um, so what I would say is that you can spend threat momentum like they were a regular character. Um, just keep in mind they also have untapped potential. What was she working on? What are they working on? Again? Computers. I think we should also have two momentum, should we not? Yeah, you should have two momentum so. right yeah. now. Well, Mir definitely has a focus. All right, so there's one from Mir. Good there. I'm uh, just looking to see. I don't think okay. one from has... Russia, right? give her a give her a momentum, maybe. Yeah, let's spend a momentum for an extra dice for her. Okay. But she doesn't have a focus, I don't think, unless we want to give her power systems on this one. Yeah, that's not going to help you here. She does I mean, have values. Can those be tapped? Yeah, Ooh. you could tap. I, I would say for future reference, yeah, they have values that you can tap. And as you may see on their sheets, I deliberately left two to fill in. So those will, you know, if we think a, a character deserves a value, we'll give them one. Um, but let's see. So that is four successes, which is what you need. Um, let me ask this, because this is what I know of the characters. This is how I think they would work. But Tamarochka would, if given the chance, spend the two, like a momentum and a threat to get the computers fully operational again. Do you guys think that's fair? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you may remove all your breaches from computers then. So yeah, uh, Captain, you're getting ready to head to the bridge when you get a chime and Tamarochka reports... Uh, acting captain, I am uh, reporting with good news. Uh, Lieutenant Mir and I, we have computer back up and running. Uh, even better than what we were telling the commander. Uh, I found problem. Problem was, is there was a, um, a jack-in-box uh, set in from Utopia Planitia. A, um, a prank by engineers there. Uh, I actually know person who wrote this. When we get back to our time, I will be hugging them up by their balls and smacking them until they cry. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, I'm calling everyone up to the bridge. Please Aggressive. report. What's the punishment going to be, though? Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So, uh, with that, we're actually going to go to deck one. So, lo and behold, yes, now that uh, you have an acting captain, uh, you guys are able to get to deck one and to the conference room. And uh, I'm just going to start throwing tokens in here, but you all are here. I just have to get everybody's tokens here. 
Oh, we even got the little ships. Mm -hmm. Somebody can later be like, oh, I got very angry. And one of the one of us can say, you broke your ships. <laughs> I can't right. even deal with you guys right now. All right, there's Cater, there's Droxine, Absy, you're at the head of the table, there's Alexio, and there's Tavarin. Look at that, everybody fits. Nice. So yeah, the uh, the conference room, as you can see, it is uh, actually very nice, very expansive, or at least expansive for a ship this size. Uh, what you see is that there actually is a golden ship display like we see on the Enterprise E of uh, various ships that have been named the Bastet. Of course, you have your own model of your own, uh, Prometheus class, uh, bottom row in the middle. And uh, other than that, uh, it is your meeting, Absy. Uh, go for it. I need a full report on our systems right now. Uh, medical bay is functioning uh, at optimal capacity, sir. Weapons are still damaged, but operational. Helm operation is optimal. Sensors are fully functional. We should be able to detect even a cloaked Klingon vessel, given the limitations of contemporary technology. Which, um, and this is Tamarocha again, which, you know, this is all high and well, but um, we have problem on hand. And she looks very pointedly at Troxene. I understand you sent out ping. Okay, so here's the thing. We were trying to get the whole comms online. So, and I mean, we did do that. So uh, you acting like man with thing to do, you, you send off ping to try and get us home quicker. Is this right? Uh, no, no, no. The ping was totally an accident. Of, of course it was. Of, of course it was. Well, Captain, and she kind of turns to you, Abyssey, unless we want to have problem when we get home and or problems getting to correct home... We are going to need to get onto vessels, not only Enterprise, not only the Klingon vessel, the Goroth, but also K7 to erase those sensor logs. I mean, unless we attribute the uh, sensor ping to the uh, Defiant. I mean, we could in theory. In it would fact, still involve getting onto those ships and altering logs. In fact, here's the thing: with the comms up and the computers back up, I, we could actually just hack into the uh, into the main computer of the Defiant, which should let us implant a record that they caused the ping. Which means that they'll actually do all the erasing of the stuff when they're they were already going to interfere in this timeline anyway, which absolves us of the whole thing. And we could do the the other the other, whew, the other thing that we're going to. What's the other Captain? What's the other thing we're doing? There was a suggestion that we acquire the cloaking device off of that Klingon battlecruiser. Um, and do what? Strap it to the hull with tape? What are you... <laughs> it, it could very easily be integrated into our systems, even though Klingon technology is relatively primitive compared to ours. The problem is that every one of these plans violates more Starfleet regulations than I can possibly name or count. And believe me, I can count to a very, very high number. So are you actually proposing, Captain, that we, I don't know, tamper further with the timeline? Alexio, a plan. Alexio leans in actually actually kind of like interested in the meeting for the first time and is like well you 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 have to admit that we're a, a little exposed out here cloaking device could help us um avoid paradoxes going forward because we'll, we'll be hidden and and furthermore might i uh, might i add uh, I have a great familiarity with Klingon culture and, and ships. As part of the academy, I, I did a rotation on the Klingon ships. So I think I'd be able to um, pass as a Klingon officer if necessary. And uh, Relur actually, or no, it's not Relur that has it. Uh, it's uh, Tamarochka that speaks up. And she says, oh, you are a fan of Klingon culture as well. Oh, yes, I didn't know you spent the time amongst them. I'm actually an honorary member of House Kigawa. 
Oh no, I am not honorary member. I um, I just took uh, Klingon 402 in the academy. Still impressive. Yes, I must admit my um, my recital of Hamlet in Klingon was a bit botched, but I do good work all the same. You're into theater. You you and I are going to be friends. <laughs> this is Wait, so we're all really good on relevant the ping, to then, the yeah? meeting, though. Please, please go on. No, we're not good on the ping. Uh, the ping is a very bad thing. Yeah, that the Defiant did. You are suggesting we sabotage the Defiant. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sabotage implies that I actually make something break on their ship. Nuh-uh, I'm going to tell them that something broke on their ship. That's different. This doesn't actually solve the problem that you've created. Do you realize yeah, that? Except that the except we already know that the Defiant's presence in this time is flagged, which means they definitely make it home. So nothing that I do to the Defiant will actually stop them from making it home. That's how temporal I'm a big physics fan works. Of, Did nobody uh, else take temporal <laughs> physics three oh four? Um, I'm I a did. big fan of passing the buck. You know, I I think it's very 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 captain like of you. How how did you how did you graduate the academy? Uh, with flying colors, uh, but literally flying colors. I'm the pilot. <laughs> how did you pass the academy? I can't imagine you're ambitious enough to have made it. Ayo, <laughs> burned them. High fives. And Nobody? everybody right. leaves you hanging. Everybody leaves you hanging. <laughs> And I think it's one of those things where uh, Relore kind of turns to Avacy and says, well, all this aside, it uh, it sounds like either we're going to be doing some hacking or we're doing a little bit of infiltrating. Um, which do you want us to work with, Captain? I'm not comfortable hacking the systems of the Defiant. I'm not comfortable messing with Benjamin Sisko's ship. Yeah, he, um, if we ever made it back to our time, he'd probably kick our asses. Like, he would fly to define a cross space just to kick our asses. And she kind of looks at Droxine, you literally have your hand up. What? Okay, so, listen, I had another thought. Um, guys, we, we, we have acknowledged that there's a Romulan cloaking device, uh, essentially contemporary to our, to us, on the Defiant, yeah? Yes. Didn't okay, I just okay. say I'm not comfortable doing something to the Defiant? Captain, just, Captain, just wait. All right. Here's the thing. As a matter of historical records, we have all the access codes from this time. It would have been stored in the computer under his logs. Right? So we can access the Defiant without, without anyone knowing, and we should be able to erase our presence. Yes? Follow me along here. If they've got a Romulan cloaking device on board their ship, they probably have the pieces, the repair pieces, of a Romulan cloaking device. So we should be able to just steal the the spare parts, build our own Romulan cloaking device, then we're not interfering with the contemporaneous with the contemporaneous Klingon ship, nor are we creating a, a paradox because they'll probably just replace those parts anyway. So Varissa kind of leans in and kind of steeples her finger fingers on the table before and says well, while that is a good thought, the problem is, if you paid attention in class, the problem is more or less that they don't have the spare parts. That, that cloaking device they have, it's on loan. It's not meant to be repaired. It's not meant to be kept. It is very much on loan, even to this day, from the Romulan government. So they have no way of repairing it if it goes wrong, meaning there are no spare parts. Well, you got to admit it was a good idea, though. I, oh, think, no, it was, I, I think it was a good idea. It was good. I, I do agree. It, uh, it, 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 was a, um, it was definitely a good thought, but unfortunately not one that will work. Captain, I, I truly think that between Verissa and I, we could pull off this operation on the Klingon vessel, but uh, at the end of the day, the decision is yours. 
Oh, why is the decision his just because we accidentally made him captain? I mean, we're all lieutenants at this table, yeah? Ooh. Well, just because the computer declared him captain drama. doesn't mean he's the captain. I mean, unless we all agree that he's the captain, in which case, I mean, that's fine. That Honestly, sounds like rather mutinous talk, you know. Yes, but I he, was about to say was um very uh very like mutiny. I it, we've been here what three days and we're already talking about mutiny. Listen, I'm not saying anybody else wants to be captain. I'm just saying like w maybe before we like clearly the doctor accidentally made him captain. Uh so so kind of so if we're gonna make him captain, let's make it official. We'll take a vote, make him captain. Then then he's got the authority going forward. Starfleet is not a democracy. Uh, we're all lieutenants. None of us outrank each other. And nobody here has the ability to give a field promotion. So we have to do it by agreement, or we've broken Starfleet protocols, Mr. By the Book. I vote for the acting captain. And I think pretty much everybody on the far side of the table, the gals, all raise their hands. I think cool. you're doing a great job, sir. All right. Now you can make some decisions. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you for your go-ahead. <laughs> I think first order of business, we need to move the ship from where we are currently. If anyone tracks the ping back, we don't want to be here. Well, you were supposed to be repairing the engines. Are we up? Engines never took a breach. Except you reported that Alpha and and beta cores were acting. You know, never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm sure you weren't just sitting there in engineering doing nothing. No, I was not just sitting there twiddling my paws. <sighs> Maybe there was some yarn down there. <clears throat> but I do. I think the course of action going forward, as much as it may not be the best it is probably the best in our situation lieutenant alexio lieutenant verissa i'm going to authorize this excursion oh how lovely uh alexio can you do the um and she motions at your face absolutely i am going to spend that momentum and i am going to transform into the perfect, absolutely perfect facsimile, facsimile of a of a rugged, angry Klingon, Klingon officer, just like right there, right right where we sit, just like a perfect, like like just like clothes and all. So Ooh. like that, more or less. Yeah. All right. I'm going to admit I was not on board for this plan, but now it looks awesome. <laughs> that was really cool. Huh. I take it you're not a changeling. <laughs> not the ones, uh, not the ones that um, we fought in the Dominion War. No, uh, I'm a Camaloid. There's not many of us. We were folded in by um, by Captain Kirk. Um, actually, not not too long. Uh, around this time period actually and I think at this point R'hllor has been pretty quiet this entire time but she actually bursts out laughing like we're talking full double over just almost crying laughter and it maybe gets to the point where you're like is, is she alright did she just literally suffer a mental crack and uh, as Varessa and T Tamarochka you know start to lean in we're like hey what, what's going on uh, she kind of, you know, rubs her eyes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I just wanted. It, it, this, can I just say this is the most absurd set of circumstances I've ever read or been involved in? I mean, granted, I, I was on one of the ships at uh, Wharf three five nine uh, as a kid, but uh, this, this is something entirely new. I mean, I, I, again, I don't mean to pry, but half of you are scared to death. The other half think that, you know, we're doomed. And it, the captain, no offense, sir, but you are feeling a little bit uh, in over your head. We're fucked, aren't we? 
So I know like our species can read minds and everything, but mm -hmm. I think you're putting a little bit of your own insecurities into everyone around you. So why don't you just take a deep breath and I'll get you a hypo spray. And I look over at the captain like I got you. And I want to try that point, and- I, I burst that laughing too. And I'm like, and not only that, but this crew is spicy. This is great. <laughs> I would actually like to make a check to like kind of shut down that negativity. I don't mm -hmm. know how I would do that, but is there somewhere to like, I want to try to inspire the crew a little bit oh, and like no, back up the captain. Yeah. That's, that's something you could do. Uh, why don't you roll me a presence and a medicine here? Cause you're speaking from a medical perspective. And Can I assist? If you tell me how. I, what I want to do is I want to pull up, the computers are back up, so with the little keypad next to me at my seat on the thing, I'm going to pull up some dramatic music that'll like swell up under him at the right time, because I have a focus in inspiration, so I want nice. to be able to help. I, nice. I just imagine like one of those cheesy corporate vids where the music swells at the, you know, it's like, and with your work, we can move forward da, in the quarter da, three. Da, da, da. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Under your commander, Captain Kitty. All right. So let's let's go. What I would say is that this would be a uh, difficulty of three. Looks like you already spent your momentum. And uh, let's I'm gonna see. You, I'm going to give you a threat to get an extra die. Okay. Let's get wild. Uh, so, Droxine, you can assist with a control engineering. Nice. Can I use composure? Sure. I'll give it to you. My man. All right. Well, there's uh, there's four successes. Very nice. You get a momentum back. Uh, do roll your untapped potential because you yes. could end up getting uh, getting momentum and or threat. I get more threat. Oh, Yay. Nice. Yay. So I just give a I give an impassioned speech about realizing that we're all in this together. And we've chosen a commander, and though he may not have been our first choice, he is the one we've got, and we trust him, and we respect him, and we're gonna be there with him, and we're gonna see him and everyone else. Through everything. Isn't that right, Captain? I've given you your orders. Let's do this. Did he give us orders? Oh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've given you orders. Go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So uh, as everybody begins to filter out, um, I would like to say that Varessa kind of leans in and kind of pulls Tavarin aside as everyone's filtering out and says, um, I, I don't mean to pry, but um, how are you at um, transporters? Um, how close could you get us to the cloaking device on that Klingon vessel? Well, given that Durotronic sensor relays cycle about every three seconds in this era, we have a actually quite large window to transport you onto the Klingon vessel. So pretty darn close. Hmm. Well, um, oh no, that's wrong voice. Well, um, let's just say I'm counting on you for this one. I'm sure you'll do fine. It's just, um, Miss Rilla's remarks may have hit a little close to home. I know I meant to do the whole infiltration thing, being from Starfleet Intelligence, but... I left that life, and I'm a little bit worried that I'm rusty. And you'll see that Thavarin is a little bit uncertain. He kind of reaches out towards her shoulder and then pulls back awkwardly, uh, and then clenches his hands together. Look, I'm, I'm not good at this sort of thing, but you're part of Starfleet. You're part of the Federation. All these different races, all these different people coming together to work in common cause. That's what this is about. If there's one thing that I know about Starfleet, it's that we always have each other's backs. It's that we're always here for each other. That's the point of being in a family, and that's the point of being in Starfleet. So I've got you. And I think she's a little taken aback at first, and she goes, well, you have quite the way with words. And you see the blush is purple, so... Oh. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. So with that, uh, I do want to check something. So I think based on our current rate of progress, we can finish before the three hour mark. 
Um, but I wanted to see if anybody has a hard stop I should be aware of. Okay. Then what we're going to do stream is we're going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. Uh, we're going to take another five to ten minute break. And then when we come back, we're going to be doing the infiltration of the Klingon vessel. So stick around. We'll be back shortly.
right, and welcome back. Oh, let me turn off red alert there. Uh, we're in hour three of our first session of Star Trek Bastet. Uh, if you're just tuning in, well, you've missed a good portion of things. I would recommend checking out the VOD. That way you don't miss any of the good character interactions we've had so far. Uh, but in case you do want to continue watching, I know that seems like a weird thing to say as a streamer, but... Uh, if you uh, are completely lost, basically what's happened is the uh, crew of the Bastet, small skeleton crew of 10 people, uh, ended up getting flung back through time. And uh, they've ended up in a past version of the Starbased K7 scenario, aka the Tribble episode of TOS. And uh, the first order of business that the crew has decided on doing is acquiring the Klingon cloaking device on the Klingon ship that is... Uh, seen in that episode, the IKS Garot. Uh, they're doing this because, if I understand correctly, they believe they might be stuck in 2268 for a long period of time. So having a cloaking device would be a good thing. So uh, the way this is going to work is, uh, Tavarin, you're going to be in charge of the transport of Varissa and Alexio over to the Klingon ship. Now... What this is going to be is this is going to be a... And let me actually clean up some tokens here. Uh, this is going to be a modular difficulty type task. And what I mean by that is you are going to set the difficulty. Uh, so the base difficulty is going to be a 2. It would be a control and an engineering. And the ship will assist you with a sensors engineering. You actually, because you repaired sensors, the di base difficulty is a one. So what this means is if you just do a base difficulty of one, you'll get within maybe a deck or two of the cloaking device. Uh, if you do a difficulty of two, you get the same deck. If you do difficulty of three, same section of the ship. Difficulty of four, you are outside the room that contains the cloaking device. Difficulty 5, you don't need to send people over. You can just beam that thing right onto the uh, the Bastet if you wanted to. 5, 5, 5. Give a bunch of threat. <laughs> I don't want to take the uh, the opportunity away from uh, Lieutenant Alexei to actually use his infiltration oh, yeah. skills. Yeah. So uh, would mental repository apply here? I think it would. Yeah, I think it would. So I would get two free successes thanks to Mental Repository and uh, Augmented Ability Control. Mm -hmm. Plus the lower difficulty of sensor. So um, I'm going to ask you, what would you prefer that I do? Put you onto the same deck or put you basically outside of it? I think the same deck is fine. Okay. And that would be a difficulty three, was it? Uh, yes, I believe so. So then it would be one with my two talents, right? At the end of the day, yes. Okay, then that is what I'll do, and I'll give you one threat to uh, roll three dice. Okay. Yeah, if there's one thing I can count on, it's uh, Matthew's mastery of the system. And transporters and replicator focus. Mm -hmm. Well, you may have mastery of the system, but that is a complication. Oof. Uh, let's see. Can someone get the sensors science or sensors engineering from the ship? And then, uh, Matt, if you could roll a, uh, challenge die there to see if I, uh, if you get momentum or I get threat. All right. No momentum, no threat. Okay. So the ship does get you two success. So you have two momentum. So we're going to cut over to the Klingon vessel. Uh, we cut to a, uh, kind of red hue, dark, dusty, grungy interior of a Klingon vessel. And, uh, Alexio, you materialize with Verissa uh, outside the room that contains the cloaking device. However, the complication is your weapons did not materialize with you, meaning you don't have any phasers on you. Yeah, so I, I turned to her and... It's a bit of a damper on a plan, isn't it? Well, I um I much prefer it this way. Um how's your how's your right hook? Lacking. Maybe I should be the one to um and she kinda motions punching. Yes. Uh perhaps I could provide a distraction. Oh that would be excellent, thank you. 
um, all right, so I'll take a deep breath, you know, as, as an actor, I have to go through my process and I'll, um, I'll proceed through as if I, as if I belong there. Okay. So you, uh, you step inside and there is another Klingon Beck. I, I know the tokens are literally the same image, but it's not the same guy. Um, the Klingon Beck just sort of looks at you and says, I didn't, what, what are you doing here? I'm not scheduled to be relieved for another three hours. Lost a bet with the first officer. Um, we challenged him to a drinking match. It was a dumb idea. Anyway, <laughs> I have, uh, the dishonorable duty of bending to the cloaking device for the rest of our mission. I'd like you to roll me a presence and command. Difficulty of four. You know what? Difficulty of three. I feel I feel generous. Difficulty of three. Presence command. If you have right. infiltration, deception, or persuasion, all would be good focuses. I have deception, and um, I'm going to go ahead and buy uh, an extra die if that's fine. Do it. Cool. Thanks. So, presence, command, three die with a focus. Wow. Jesus. Oh! <laughs> Wow, that is that is six successes. So you actually get three momentum back. Very nice. Wow. So uh, what happens is the Beck thinks about arguing, but then he's like, ha, ha, yeah, our first officer's a dick," and uh, kind of slaps you on the shoulder and says, "You made a you made a grave mistake challenging him to a drinking match, though. What were you thinking?" And it's right about then that uh, as his back is to the door. Uh, Lieutenant Varissa kind of sneaks in and taps the Klingon Beck on the shoulder and he turns around and she just clocks him across the jaw. And uh, I'll roll just to see if you guys get momentum, but I'm like 99% sure she's going to succeed here. Oh, hey, I get a point of threat too. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, no, I'm looking. Nope. You guys get the momentum, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, so she is rolling a daring and a security. Her dice pool is two. She does have a focus of martial arts. Hey, look at that. I just got you guys uh, two momentum. So, uh, yeah, out. Varissa. We've got a floating. Ooh. ooh. So I think this is what, because I'm going to roll damage here for her, because I think that would be kind of funny if she literally knocked him out. Uh, let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> so, Alexio, you've seen some punches in your day. But this punch, like, this is like a heavyweight boxer punch that Farissa just... The, the Beck's head literally spins and his body follows suit as he literally cartwheels down into the floor unconscious. And uh, the extra momentum, I'm going to spend, if it's okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. spend the floating and one momentum that she does so in a way that none of the internal sensors start going off. Like he doesn't yep. accidentally like hit a console and signal yep. kind of a thing. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, she I'll clocks him. He goes down to the ground and she goes, Oh, apparently I'm more skilled than I thought. Well, yeah, <laughs> certainly glad that you're on my side. Well, um, do you um want to handle the cloaking device as I drag him out of the way? Certainly. And I'll um walk over to the device, take a, start taking a look at it. Okay. So the device itself, um, similar to what we're seeing on the map right now, there's kind of these golden pillars surrounded by red and black meshwork. Um, there's a tube that connects the two golden pillars. And in the middle of that uh, connector is where the trapezoidal cloaking device is located. Now, the console before you is in Klingon, so I do have to ask, do you know Klingon language? I mean, so I actually have honorary Klingon from my, like, 
backstory from building out my backstory. Mm -hmm. So I think it would make sense. I just don't. No, I, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So what you see, there's three buttons. And because you can read Klingon, you know what they say. The first one is a green button that says deactivate the cloaking device. There's a red button that activates the cloaking device. And then there's an orange button to dis disengage the cloaking device, as in like literally disconnect it kind of a thing. Um, I would like to disconnect it, but is there a way to... Um to use the console such that it doesn't like trigger a, a notice or, or something like on the bridge that it's there been would be a role involved, but it is possible. Yes. All right. So I want to go ahead and try that. Okay. This is going to be a control and a security difficulty of three. All right. Would my jury rigging focus up nah, here well i guess you are technically jury rigging kind of a bypass yeah i'll, I'll give it to you I'll, I'll be nice i'll give it to cool. you thanks and i will buy one more one more die but that's fine yeah okay yeah cool. survey says oh All right. no only the one success. Uh, do you have determination to reroll if you so wished? I already used mine. Okay. So I think what happens is you attempt to bypass the security procedures, and suddenly the ship begins to sound a Klingon klaxon and an alert has set, been set off. And Varessa kind of looks at him and goes, What are you doing? What? No, not the alarm. Um, and, and it's one of those things where the Beck starts to sit up and she sees that and goes, oh, no, not you. Shut up. And she punches him again. Um, I'm going to. Um, did it disengage, though? Yes. Yes, it did. OK, it did disengage. And I'm like, uh, now would be about the time I think that um, um, we should get Lieutenant Devarin to make an extraction, I believe. The uh, cloaking I, device is disengaged. I oh, okay. Um, uh, help me get it out, and um, we'll we'll make it so that he doesn't have to beam us close to this interference. All right. So um, I'll rush over. All right. So between the two of you, um, sort of like what we see in uh, DS Nine, where uh, Quark and Rom—at least I think it was Quark and Rom—are uh, stealing the cloaking device. Um, you pull out this trapezoidal <laughs> prism. And um, you sort of lug it out into the hallway and uh, you get a call over to Tavarin. But what do you tell Tavarin is the question here. Uh, just the, that we and the cloaking device need immediate extraction. What's that blaring klaxon in the background? Uh, it's the, the sound of the, the uh, warp board. Wow, those cl ancient Klingon vessels really were poorly designed. All right, uh, stand by for transport. All right. I love that everybody on this ship is a liar. That's I, I love it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's break this down, because, again, transporting is the most complicated role in the system. All right, so control engineering, difficulty of two to be as a base. Uh, sensors engineering from the ship. Your target is not on a transporter pad, so difficulty three. You have advanced sensors, goes back down to difficulty two. The alarm has been raised on the Klingon vessel, difficulty three. You're beaming not only people, but a cloaking device, which means you have to do it correctly the first time, difficulty of four. So total difficulty at the end of the day is a difficulty of four. Can I assist on this? If you tell me how. Explaining these old Klingon vessels have this particular flaw in their shielding arrays. If you, so I'm going to direct them, if you bypass through this juncture here, you should be able to get a better signal. I can cross reference that with our data regarding the uh, modulation of their shield frequencies. So the, the, uh, 
we can actually transport through the shields given that they have this particular window in their operation. So absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right. And what I'd like to try to argue for just, mm -hmm. you know, cause I have to, is that I've been sitting at this transporter console for some time preparing for this. I know that it's something I'm going to have to do. Mm -hmm. So could I tap the, uh, the use of my mental repository? I think you could. Yeah. Okay. And I'll also use augmented ability control. Which brings it down to a difficulty of two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And right. I'll give you a, a one momentum, if that's all right with everyone, to buy an extra die. Sure. Yep. Oh, Alexio, you got to roll. Uh, you got to roll the uh, untapped potential. Oh yeah. So. So what am I going to roll? Uh, you're going to be rolling right. a that's one presence. Momentum. Ooh, very nice. Uh, you're going to be rolling a presence command on your side. Ship helps with the one. Oof. Ooh, but we do have a complication. Interesting. Oh, but here Alex's advisor would would Oops. would play in. So Oops. I think I think Alex he disconnected for a little bit. Oh no. Well, I think he's back. Maybe. Uh yep. can you hear us no, now? Maybe. I'm back, I think. I hear right. you now. Okay. Yeah, you uh you you froze there for a second, and then you just kind of went boop. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's quickly fix webcams. Uh, so the order is going to be, uh, Captain, you're up first. Uh, then it's going to be uh Alexio, then Droxine, then Cater, then Tavarin. Excellent. And uh, we'll learn that order so that uh, I can just say cameras and we'll fix it in the future. But you know, first stream all oh, what's not. Uh, but let's see. So, so. Uh, Abbasi, you're doing a presence command. Um, do you have advisor is the question? Yes, I do. Okay, then Tavarin, you can reroll that complication. Let's see, and I also have starship recognition. Would that count? Oh, you most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Okay, so we're at three successes right now. All right, so just the three successes, which means you do get one point of momentum. So I believe you're at five right now. So and then you roll a challenge dice for your yep, roll untapped challenge potential. Dice. Takes a threat. Ooh, and I get some threat. threat. So what I'm going to say is, uh, Varessa and Alexio, you do beam away uh, back to the Bastet with the cloaking device in hand. But uh, if you can imagine, we sort of go to an external shot of K7. And around it, of course, are the contemporary Constitution class Enterprise and the Klingon D7. And it's one of those things where suddenly, uh, because your communications are working at full capacity, albeit temporarily, um, may actually, you know what? Let's actually go to the bridge for this now that I think about it, because I think that's where people would be at this point. Uh, so, Absi, you would be in the main chair. Uh, let's see, Tavarin, you would, would you be on the bridge or would you be actually in the transporter room? Uh, I'd be in the transporter room, okay. uh, probably making my way to the bridge now that I've, if I've successfully transported them back. All right. So that means that Droxine and Relur are at the helm. Uh, our lovely Russian is in engineering. I think Mir is manning science. So what happens, did I miss anybody? Oh, Cater, Cater, would you be in uh, sick bay or on the bridge? So I would probably be on the bridge. I would have taken the science station, but if someone else wants it, that's fine. No, I mean, there's plenty of science stations to go around. I'll take another so. science station, yeah. All right. So uh, Mir kind of turns and says, um, Captain, uh, the Klingon, based on what I'm picking up, the Klingons are accusing Captain Kirk of trying to sabotage their vessel, which... If I understand history correct, didn't happen. Also, listen, I don't. I didn't want to bring it up during the meeting, but um, isn't our main concern the commander in sickbay who needs immediate medical attention? Uh, how did how did getting a cloaking device help us with that? I thought we came to the uh, consensus that the medical facilities on board our ship right now are more powerful than what the station has available uh-huh so why aren't we fixing the commander 
So um, great question. I'm really glad you asked. Um, we, I can't, he's too gone. Um, we, I, it's a good ship. It's just not good enough for what he needs. But he is in stasis, right? Correct. Yeah, no, he's totally fine. He's not going to get worse. He's just, he's not going to get better unless we get back to our time. Maybe the future. I don't know. So for now, as long as we have power, he's remaining in stasis. He's not going to deteriorate. Probably. Probably. I mean, more than likely. That's and I think about it's this time when uh, Alexio and uh, Varessa ex- probably end up on the bridge. Uh, you've already dropped off the cloaking device in engineering, and uh, our favorite Russian is going to work right away to get it integrated. But uh, Alexio and Varessa, you come onto the bridge, and Varessa says, um, Well, um, you want to tell them, Alexio, or should I? I. When I disengaged the cloaking device, it set off the alarm on their ship. So that's why they're saying Kirk sabotaged them. Lieutenant Alexio, I'm going to need your abilities again. What do you have in mind, Captain? If we can put up a filter over our communications, make our bridge look like a Klingon bridge, I want you to taunt them. I want you to make them think it was a rival house sabotaging them, and then we get out of here. It's insane, and it's also genius, and I think it could work, Captain. Um, I, I'll, I'm happy to do it and I will um, I'll transform again um, um, but this time I definitely I want to look like I want to look like a captain like I want to look like I'm in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in charge of a vessel gotcha yeah that can certainly happen um, I don't have a TOS era Klingon like that available but uh, just have to theater of the mind that that's sure. what you look like yeah. But uh, my one question here is, would you interrupt uh, Tomarochka down in engineering? Because she does have uh, photonic applications as a focus. So she would probably be the best. Well, I don't know. Does anyone else have a, a hologram, a holographic technology focus? Not even a little. Right. So, yeah, so she'd then- be the one to... to- <laughs> To so actually set it ship. up, yeah. 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 So I guess who's going to interrupt her is the question. I, I, I can take the ship. I, I can keep the ship just beyond their sensor range, but close enough that it seems like we'd be in range to do the taunting. Let's do that. Yep. I'll, I'll send, I'll send the, uh, the message down Would to we, engineering. Do we, do we need the... We just need a contemporary bridge, right? Can we not scan their bridge and just replicate? We just tell the computer to replicate it. Computer's back up. Sensors are back up. And it's one of those things that it's everybody can hear Tamarochka through uh, Alexio's comm badge. And she says, I'm sorry, you need me to create 2268 Klingon battle bridge, regular bridge. You need to be more specific. (laughs) Main bridge. Main uh, bridge? Am I doing it to the bridge of where you are currently? Am I doing it to auxiliary bridge? How quickly do you need this done? We need it for the main bridge, and we need it as quickly as you can do it. As this in, is your first this priority. Is a priority. Okay, very nice. In that case, um, give me one moment, and uh, I would like one of you to uh, do the role here because I don't want the failure on my hands if it happens. <laughs> I got it. I got it. All right. I'll, this take, is going to be, I'll accept responsibility. This is going to be a control and an engineering. Okay. She does have a focus. Photonic applications. Yep. The Bastet will assist you with a computers and a command. She would like to spend her momentum and tap the value. I do it because no one else will. Okay. 
for the difficulty a, uh, on this is still going to be a five. She'll yep. She'll use. She'll get the two two auto successes. Uh, and then she will spend all five of those momentum for two extra dice. Okay. And what is the ship rolling? Uh, they are rolling a computers and a command for the ship. Okay. Well, that Bam! is already five successes. And, and the ship rolls a complication. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, I don't know. Absy, would you let Alexio have your chair for a moment? I'll step away from the chair. Please show us your skills. I and use sure my enough. evasive action uh, focus to just yeah. evade the camera from the thing so they can still fly the ship, but that you, you can't see me. Right, right, right. So yeah, everybody uh, gets out of the way or otherwise, you know, stays out of view of the camera. And what happens is that sort of central area where the command chair is, um, there's kind of like a shimmer of light and the holographic emitters uh, create a lifelike representation of a Klingon bridge in that area specifically. And uh, Relure reports um, ch channel open, sir. Did it... Hello, I'm calling to gloat. And Varessa kind of off screen goes, a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> I think you'll find that the paltry security you put around your cloaking device folded in seconds against one of my weakest warriors. And Varessa does a little bit more. A little bit more. We uh, found ourselves with a faulty and malfunctioning cloaking device. And rather than making the trip all the way back to our base, we thought we'd just snatch one from the weakest looking crew we could come across. And Varessa gives you the OK sign. And uh, Relore kind of looks down at her console and goes, okay, there, I, I've got the Enterprise trying to hail us. I, I've got K7 trying to hail us. I, I, the Klingons are pissed. Like, they're charging weapons and coming in this direction. Oh, but uh, apparently our chief engineer, I, I don't know what to call her at this point. She apparently has the cloaking device connected, Captain. Shall I take evasive action and activate cloak, Captain? Get us out of here. All right. Don't answer I any said. of the hails. Doop, 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 doop. So what we see is kind of the uh, exterior shot of the Bastet uh, swooping off to the right side of the screen, but shimmering from view as it does so. And moments later, the D7 battlecruiser, the Klingon one, comes zooming into frame and begins kind of a search pattern. And I tell you what, I think that is a perfect time to end our first session. So, yeah, what did you guys think? Uh, did you enjoy it? That was amazing. Uh, a lot of fun. Incredible. Yeah. Yep. It, it could not have been more an honor to promote Captain Kitty accidentally. <laughs> Glorious. That was super fun. I, I, I personally really loved the, the chaotic nature of it. You know, it mm -hmm. felt very disorganized, but also that we all kind of fell into our, like, it felt natural. Like, we're just out of Starfleet, so we just fell back into our training. Like, oh, we got a problem solved. You know, we're all Starfleet, Starfleet folks, so mm -hmm. oh, that was cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, YouTube, this is where we say goodbye to you, but Twitch stick along a little bit longer. But uh, see you later, YouTube.